Let's get that ball rolling. Oh, right. For some reason, I have to kill that Facebook uh, screen, but we should be live, guys. Um, hey, this is Ryan Kingsline, and I am just going to get this kind of set up. I am sitting here with Alex Mandrajev. That's correct. You got it. <laughs> I'll speed it up, too. I swear my wife is Indian. I swear she is. You know, I, I have lots of practice. Okay, uh, so give me one second, guys, to make sure everybody can hear me and um, and that you guys can all see me on the different social channels. Uh, go to webinar. You guys are live. Hey, Maria. Hey, Seth. Hey, Brian. So you guys um, have the quickest connection. I'll be able to see what you guys are typing and posting quite quickly. If you're on Facebook, give me a quick note. Let me know that you um, can hear and see me. There's about a 45-second delay, so I will move on to YouTube. YouTube, we are... It says live with Josh Herman. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, maybe I should try to edit that. Will it let me edit? Live with. Oops. And we'll kill it. Okay. All right, good. We're live there. All right, guys, one second. I'm just checking all of the different channels, making sure you guys are all here. And then we're going to start this conversation because this is a really exciting conversation. One second. I'm just Whoa. checking. Make sure I'm not getting feedback in there. Okay. Looks like we're good, Alex, on all of our different screens. Awesome. And uh, let's keep the chat open there. Delays in YouTube, Facebook can hear me, and go to webinar. All right, guys. So this is a really exciting conversation for me, um, and I hope for you. And I'll explain why here in a second. But um, I remember the first time that I I, we, I was introduced to Alex through um, through Jared, who uh, runs a class over a concept art workshop, a creature and character class. And Alex, uh, Jared's just an amazing uh, teacher and uh, one of our best. I think, and um, so he's bringing up Alex and you know all this stuff for uh, for what Alex does, and and then I'm looking at Alex's art station, and I'm like, is this guy a concept guy? Is he a painter? Like, what? Who does he illustrate book covers? Like, I got lost for a bit, and and then when <laughs> I had the conversation with you, Alex, I was like, wow, it's like, how'd you get into this industry? And, you know, and the career that you have and what you do, it's, it's incredibly fascinating. So I'm telling you guys that up front so that you know right off the bat um, that this is a very interesting. It's, this, is, this industry concept, there's a lot of people out there that are very public about what they do. And concept in many ways is, uh, is, is it's described as this like you, you draw something so that somebody can build something. So there's a very mechanical aspect to it. And I like to say right. that there are two different types of concept artists. There's explicit and there's implicit guys like Justin Sweet. But uh, I'm telling you this to kind of frame this conversation because there's a whole nother level to this conversation that we're adding here um, in this conversation with uh, Alex. And that's important to me because... At a concept art workshop, the goal is to kind of go that next level. So it's not just drawing, but drawing in 3D. It's not just drawing, but it's drawing this on and for this whole different purpose. So without uh, with that kind of frame, let me introduce you guys to Alex Mandriev, and uh, and let's get this conversation started. So thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Hey guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, Great. Yeah, I don't know where to start. Really, it's uh, it's been a long journey for me. And uh, uh, let's start and talk about to, um, what you do now. Yeah. Like, what is it that you tell sure. people you do now? I, I I'm an illustrator, <laughs> yep. and I I do 
keyframes for film mainly. And only recently I've started to branch out into television, but it's been for film uh, for the past several years. Um, and I love it. It's, I feel like it's my calling. I, I sync with it. Um, I, I live and breathe film. I, I, I try to watch something uh, almost every other day. Uh, in between work or when I'm taking a break, I, 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 I watch uh, uh, documentaries I, uh, on filmmaking, uh, the, the director's reel, that, the, those type of behind the scenes, uh, not, only, not only watching the, the artist's work, but uh, also analyzing it and, and seeing different breakdowns, seeing different opinions. And, and, and aside from the many brilliant instructors that, that have taught me my foundations and in, in how to perceive and uh, create the illusion of light on this digital two-dimensional surface uh, my my go-to roots are always the directors are always the cinematographers and um, those are my home sweet home mentors mm. so to speak so um so would you, I, I could, would you yeah. say you're a concept artist or illustrator i can whatever i'm labeled as yeah that's i guess what i am in the client's eye but right. i see myself as a artist as a as an illustrator i guess it's more i think it, i feel more comfortable saying that concept artist is good too I, there's nothing wrong with that um right. I guess I'm an illustrator. I'm considered as an illustrator. Before illustrator, I was concept artist. Maybe I ranked up. Maybe it's a change. I I, I have no idea. Great. But uh, yeah, it's it, that's a strange uh, one for me because I hear that a lot. Like, mm. what is what are what is the difference? What is the difference between a concept artist and an illustrator? Or is, why are you called? Why are you? Why does it say cinematic illustrator? What is the difference between that? And personally, I called myself that. And yeah. you know, if it if it rings well, it rings well. I, I I don't care if it's if people are being judgmental on it. It's just how I see myself. I I like to do cinematic pieces that tell story. Great. So. Yeah. Call me, call me whatever you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. Is that the deal? <laughs> sure. Yes. Okay, great. So, who's your client? Um, and because this is the really interesting part for me, like a concept artist might work at, let's say, Blizzard, and they, you know, there's a million things to to design and think about and work out. But in in your particular career, who is your client? Uh, producers, directors. Um, I've never had a conversation or, 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 or feedback from a writer before, mm -hmm. but mainly a producer, director, uh, and art directors. Okay. Uh, someone like Ryan Meiderding over at Marvel. Or, right. uh, yeah. I, that's, that's my client. That's the person who hires me. That's the person who directs me okay, a lot of the time. Ryan, I, I don't know Ryan personally, but Ryan strikes me as he's somebody who understands that term illustrator, I think. Yes, absolutely. And he is one himself and beyond the guy's a machine. <laughs> God, tell me about <laughs> it, man. Uh, so what is the product that you deliver? And, I, and I'm kind of breaking it down in real simple terms like this for everybody. And we're going to get more layered and nuanced. But I wanted to know who the client was because it's not that you're necessarily just working for some company and you're producing designs, but you work with the directors, the art directors, the producers. So what is it that you have to give them? Um, well, something that will, ins something that will help them either pitch their story mm -hmm. or help them uh, visually realize what they're looking for if mm -hmm. they can't see it, or, or perhaps they already have the vision. They just need it. They just need it uh, very fleshed out. Uh, they, they want to see it, um, they, they want to see it in front of them so they could be convinced. Right. So uh, sometimes it's very handheld, very art directed. Sometimes it's very blue sky. And it's like my idea is it's about 
these astronauts and they're going through a wormhole. How do we show that? How can we, how can we show that differently? So now I'm starting to think about, do I just show astronauts flying through a wormhole or maybe I can have something a little uh, one layer deeper. What's the story behind it? Where are they coming from? Do they, is, is, is one astronaut skinny, uh, the other one bigger? I, I, what, why does that matter? What's the color palette? What's, uh, how is it lit? How is it cropped? How, how are we showing them in the frame? Um, and that's uh, placing the viewer in the mind of, of the story and the mind of the characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, for doing that, that's, uh, I think that's important to a lot of uh, my clients because it speaks their language i think it's it's where they come from so in what i always force myself to do is speak their language in the method that i um, create i'm not a cinematographer i don't edit um, i've never made a film in my life but i want each image to me is as if i have already made this movie and it's a snapshot from it's a frame from the movie I made. So right. that to me is an uh, is a step closer to uh, them uh, exactly feeling what I'm feeling, exactly seeing it the way I'm seeing it. Because certain images could be very ambiguous, and uh, for clients who have never worked with me before, I have to be more clear. I can't be. Uh, um, pushing the abstract, pushing the feeling more. I have to be very direct and simple and then slowly open up towards them and as they start to trust me more so, so they could see what I'm capable of on the deeper side. Mm. That's, a, that's a great um, place to see if we can segue. It, it, do you have an example on Spider-Man for where something like that might have happened where you had to be more literal in the beginning and you had to, and then you became more emotional or just one that is more literal and one that is more emotional? Because hmm. I remember that one well, of the things that got me thinking it, is I remember the Bo Bartlett one I was talking about, the one that I thought looked like Bo Bartlett. <laughs> you know, there was a yes. whole emotion that you you were conveying in there. Yes. Uh, well, uh, it, this is... <clears throat> the the composition is, is a little m more abstract. I'm, I'm definitely placing us below it's a it's a more heroic shot yet spider-man is not using his um web mm -hmm. he's running out and he's running out in the foreground there's a toy backpack and to a roll of tissue paper uh, it's you're starting to ask yourself what he's running out of is it what is it a closet is it a porta potty essentially this was an idea of him running out of a porta potty mm -hmm. so that there's a com maybe a comedy in this but this a lot of the spider-man images were really more about the action about the poses uh and it was probably required to be uh pretty uh, pretty clear but i know i have certain images that go a little, they stray away from that. Mm -hmm. And um, some of them are, for me, exploring how moments are, are, could be lit, how we could see his suit in a very dark scenario, how this, how the red, um, how the c color composition mm -hmm. will, will strike us because this is red, but then the blue, it, 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 it becomes, one with the night and then there's the the lights from the from the car in the distance maybe this is a connection maybe this is his um the next move where he's headed towards that that's his calling uh, and it's it seems ominous he's he's going to, he's going there for sure you can feel he's headed there it, mm -hmm. and it feels like a, a darker fr frame it almost could be confused for a horror film maybe to to a lot of viewers but um for example that is one this is maybe also a, a little more of an abstract composition uh for the shocker 
um, I wanted to introduce the Shocker character without showing his face, but to show his weapon. Because to me, that's what his character is. The, he is the Shocker because of his violent power, his violent uh, device that he carries with him. Um, and I, I'm inspired by uh, different films, uh, specifically Goodfellas, uh, a thug, uh, a mobster, mm -hmm getting out of a car and seeing the weight of the car lifting up as he stands out. Of course, the shocker is not that heavy, but I, that's something that has stayed with me from, for a long time. And, and I wanted to s translate that. So I'm also here framing, framing the, the focal point, not only through value, but through color and the color, again, it's a very, um, very vibrant and emotional uh, resonation. The red, the frame him in that red, it's very hot. You can definitely, to me, you can definitely feel that this thing will burn you. It will shock you if he hits you with it, if, if he projects whatever he projects out of his uh, weapon. So the composition Without this figure in the middle, maybe you will be able to read the door. But because we have a relatable image in the center, everything else sort of falls into place. Mm -hmm. it wouldn't really be able to get these these shapes if you were to take them out of context are, are very abstract. But because of the figure in the middle, it snaps it together. And I, I believe a lot of my work uh, is, is like that. Um, this is very abstract. This, to me, the the feeling behind this is fear, the, the fear of the unknown. And I wanted to show the vulture without showing him. It's just two dots for his eyes from the helmet, but mm. all we see is the wings, uh, kind of like a, like a spider, a spider's nest. Right. You don't really yeah. see the spider clearly, but you see the front of the legs. You don't want to see the rest. You don't want it to crawl out, but you're curious. You're, you do want to torture yourself. It's come, you want to see it come out, but you, you, at the same time, you're afraid. So it's that type playing with that type of emotion, that type of lighting, um, the anticipation of it all. And how does a director or an art director or producer use that image? Like how, what's the, cause it's not designing something. It's uh, maybe describing a scene, but how, how how do they use these kinds of evocative images? A lot of the times, it's used uh, for lighting. It's used um, mm. for the, f this is how it should feel. This is how it should look. Right. That's, this is the lighting. It's it's story elements as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, make sure we see the party on on the right side and we see the car on the left. That's, that's. That's how we want it. But the way you've lit it, the way you've, that's perfect. That's, it feels like the street. It feels like the location. There's also, I'm handed a lot of location scouts. So it's, um, it, that uh, also comes into play and in trying to maybe resemble this area, the, sub, mm -hmm. the suburban or, or, or the ghetto alleyway or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, they use it, I feel, for 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 mood, for lighting and inspiration. And then um, there's a whole different side to the team that designs and, and defines uh, perhaps the sequential parts, how like a storyboard artist mm -hmm. or um, which, by the way, uh, I hope I'm not jumping all over the place. The storyboards a lot of times come first before these keyframes. I, I, I was going to ask about the yeah. storyboards because it seems like you're storyboarding. You're basically visually writing the story. Uh, y yes, uh, not for Spider-Man, but for, uh, I've had that opportunity in the past yeah. uh, for sure. Um, the script, for example, I, I didn't work on The Matrix, but from what I've heard, mm -hmm. the, uh, the the lobby shootout on the script. Yeah, it's very simple. Neo and Tr Trinity 
a walk into the lobby and they have a shootout. That's all it says. It's something very simple. I'm not quoting it exactly. Right. But the Wachowski brother, brothers probably visualize that with the story and, and they improvise this whole and it, with uh, Wu Ping. They, they really created something epic that's memorable. The same way uh, I've had the opportunity in the past to create a sequence of frames that inspired the writer to uh, reverse engineer the story into uh, the script based on what uh, my work um, projected to them. So, yeah, uh, storyboards a lot of times help me as well. Um, That's great. And they, we're getting... they, they want a specific frame, yeah. and I take it and I just elaborate on top of it. I try not to stray away or anything. Cool. Uh, this might be a good time to bring in some questions. Now, we'll open this up for Q&A more at the end uh, part of this, so don't sweat that. You'll get a chance. Uh, but I'm going to pull – if you're asking questions, I'm going to pull them in every now and then. And keep in mind, if you're watching this live, it might compress some of the blacks in the images, so make sure you go over Ooh. to Alex's uh, art station. And uh, and hope, and that's actually one of the questions I want to kind of look in once we get into – if we can get you into Photoshop because your blacks, the it's like the – they're so subtle, man. That's a hard <laughs> thing to make work, man. But uh, but before we do that, um, Kalina is asking: Would Alex recommend someone who's trying to get into the industry to go for keyframe concept if it's their passion, or work more on traditional roles such as concept designer or artist? I would say follow your passion. Do that. Uh, the more you do that the more you massage that dream, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, equip yourself with all the knowledge and all the tools that you need, that you need, not that you see, that what you feel is right for you, what you feel comfortable, and you wield it again and again and again and create the, uh, the work you want to do, the work you want to be uh, hired for, I guess. Um, you could it's not a bad thing to climb up as well starting this concept and this that's how i did it for example um my first introduction into keyframes was oh, jared again he helped me get into a, a aaron sims company this was a long time oh, yeah. ago mm -hmm. and i was doing uh more visual effects uh, deformed faces burnt bodies mm -hmm. and zombies and uh, entire spectrum of that and i i'm not saying i invented this wheel or anything this had this type of work has existed for a long time before me or any of these uh behemoths that you see today creating amazing work uh it, it, i just had the idea because uh, i wanted to show the, the these burnt bodies i wanted to show these zombies or whatever uh in the moment i think that could sell that could sell the pitch that because i see clients coming in and they're uncertain they're panicking and oh maybe will this work will this work and they need the confidence so maybe if i show the frame that they're asking these creatures to be in um they will feel safer they will feel more convinced that this movie will come to the reality I'm showing them. So that was my uh, personal take on it. I never uh, said that out loud, mm -hmm. but that's how. I, so I just uh, gave that a shot. And before that even, actually my very first take on it, uh, before I got hired officially at Aaron's, I did storyboards very it was like a one night 80 frames sit down insane stuff or something close around 80 maybe it was 50 i, I don't know okay it's still and i want i loved telling the story i loved doing it and on top of that it wasn't even digital it was on sticky notes on the yellow posted uh the horizontal widescreen looking things mm -hmm. and uh and then when I got hired back on, it, it, I was hired on, uh, back on for a piece that somewhat resembled this. It was a lady with a, it was just a portrait. It was 
showing that I had the skills to photo bash, to manipulate with Photoshop and, and, and get it to a near resolved state. And I got hired on that basis, but n never on the work I am doing now. This sort of, this bloomed. This is work I did for Edge of Tomorrow. This is very loose work. It's my start in keyframes. This is done at Aaron Sims. Mm -hmm. Edge of Tomorrow is also live, uh, die, repeat, or something like that with Tom Cruise and um, All You Need Is Kill is the original name. I, I forgot the films. I remember it, yeah. Uh, and this is as well. But it's it's really, compared to my more recent work, this is very loose. Uh, it's very painterly. Mm -hmm. But there's still... I, I still try to get it to the photo texture feel that I've been influenced by uh, Craig Mullins, by, um, by Justin, some of Justin's work, Justin Sweet. Uh, anyway, I made my own goal. I made, I took my own initiative because I didn't want to do what I had already done mm -hmm. in a game company which was environment just straight up multiplayer maps that was gr a great experience as well i'm not disregarding any of this it's all very valuable yeah. but i also didn't want to do the just the effects it wasn't making me satisfied with what i'm what was pushing me i i really wanted to just jump out of myself and do exactly this um that's great and kalina i think that more than answered right <laughs> <laughs> and Sorry, I kind of no, went off. No, that was great. And I was going to add to that, you know, one of the biggest failures in my experience has got to be succeeding at something you just don't care about because then you got to keep doing it. Yeah, and doing it that's hard. For, for just money or doing it for uh, just to be in the entertainment industry, that's, that, that's a, you know, honestly, that's a start because you got to realize – when you're in the entertainment industry, that's a privilege. Not everybody gets to do this and to be comfortable doing this for a living, even if it's low pay at first, mm -hmm. that's that's a made man's job. That's a king's living. Uh, there's a lot of work out there and it's hard backbreaking stuff. This to me is exhausting, but it's gratifying. It's mentally exhausting, if anything. You might lose sleep certain days, um, but it, you're doing exactly what, you're doing something from your soul. Um, you probably work with assholes certain times. Most of the times you work with very genuine creative people mm. uh and that's that's a lucky privilege I, I i've always felt that i i don't complain about in this industry hollywood or the game industry it's it's a to me it's a blessing i wouldn't want it any other way mm -hmm. that is so awesome so, to hear it's easy to hear a lot of the negativity especially if you're online in some places because you know it's it is hard and you know it can be brutal and somebody could get you know laid off because film is very hard that way um, yeah, it is. But it's great to hear um, that inspiration from you because you still have that love for it. You know, I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, it's my love for film. Mm. Um, I, I, I love actually taking on independent projects a lot of the time mm -hmm. because it's, I see maybe it's because I, I want to make a movie one day, but at the same time, I always question myself. I, I don't, I don't know if I will. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually want to create content that resonates with my viewer, that that, that uh, strikes an emotion, that something they will remember yeah. or come back to or think about. Yeah. Whether that's a movie or a series of paintings in a gallery or work done for a movie. That's fine with me. That's that's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, that's great. We should have a gallery show. Here, we should here in Laguna Beach. We can just put these on <laughs> canvas, and then that, and then we just jack the price up, and a good frame. 
that's good. That's Absolutely. Important. Yeah. Gold, <laughs> gold leaf, gold, gold leaf frames. <laughs> I love it. All right. Let me check in with you guys real quick. And then uh, I want to take a quick, I want to make sure that you guys, I want to make sure you guys see the range of Alex's work. Um, because it, there's number one, there's some, there's an enormous amount of range, but it's all this deep pathos. And then if you don't mind, Alex, I'd love to get into uh, Photoshop and start to explore Sure. What you were talking about, which is just how you find stuff, because one of the questions we had was, you know, what, number one, your color palette. And then the other one was, is how do you make something that's so abstract, like that door with the guy coming out with the shocker? Like, how do you make it even look like it's actually a door, you know, because it's so abstract. Um, right. So I want to do that. But let me take a quick look at this and see if there's any other questions um, that we want to push in. Um there's a, let me, this might be a, a little off the side, but let's try this. So Ivan is asking, what do you think is the best way to find clients for this type of work, for keyframe, for mood paintings? Um, you put your, uh, the way I've done it, uh, you put yourself out there and you, and you make sure you're in, 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 in a good circle of friends, people that could possibly recommend you, people that know others, but, uh, you put your work as I have and in the past with CG hub and on my blog, which hasn't been updated in a while, but mm. CG hub and, uh, um, I mean, art station, sorry. Uh, art station is, uh, something I'm constantly updating as well as I guess Instagram nowadays, but you're constantly putting this stuff out there. It, it is noticed. It is seen by people who care about it, but they, people who want to hire you. Mm -hmm. um, that's one way that I know. Um, to really sell yourself, you do work, you do work that would be needed, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and how do we discover what's needed? Because that's a great point, right? I mean, yeah. you want to be valuable to people. That's how you get hired. Um, and once you're in this industry, we were talking about this earlier, once you're in this industry, you kind of know more about, you know, okay, so if I do this, I might be candidate for this job coming up. This guy's working on this project. Um, but how do, how do people know now? Like if somebody's not here, they're in, let's say Wisconsin, um, and they're, they don't have too much of an option on circle of friends yet. Like how do they know what's valuable and what's useful? Well, maybe you do work that reflects the world around you. Maybe you paint mm -hmm. the, the modern life or, or what, what inspires you, the things mm -hmm. that you watch. That's one way. Another is if you are, if you go out and you, for film, if you, if you watch a lot of movies, you do work that uh, revolves around that universe. What's, I guess, what's trending now mm -hmm. that seems like, the cyberpunk is definitely coming back, if not already back, uh, with from Ex Machina, Ghost in the Shell, Blade Runner coming out. That stuff is growing and growing. Uh, it's a very rich palette right now, especially from that to Game of Thrones to um, musicals are coming through as well. Uh, how do you show that? Uh, a lot more horror films are coming back into the palette that we are um, experiencing. So I guess the best way really is, is to do what you haven't seen and what you want to see, mm -hmm. what, what you'd like to see. You, you create work that you want the viewers to see and what you haven't seen yet. I know that's probably hard to, to explain, but it, it will resonate. That feeling, that, that soul that you put into your work will scream I at love the viewer. That. No, that makes total sense to me because it's easy to feel like you don't have power because, you know, I have school and so I get emails every now and then like, what do I do? I'm here. And, you know, nobody does concept art in, you know, this city or this place or they do ZBrush or something like that. But what you're really talking about is, look, you know, yeah, it'd be great come to L.A., but 
all you're doing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is is you're making stories about stuff that, you know, you, you think is important. And that can be done anywhere, you know. And so illustrate, yes. just get to the job of illustrating, you know, the things that are important to you. And somebody's yes. going to see, oh, look, this guy has illustrated this. This is, the, this is his project. So start thinking in terms of projects. Start thinking in terms of, um, you know, what the resources you have for yourself right now. Right. Um, one of the ways I, I would think about it is the, the kick I get out of creating a series of pieces. Um, maybe I'm twisted in my head, but I, I, I do like creating dark work. But it's probably because of how I grew up, where I come from. So um, oh, was I'm it, sort of... Uh... Was it in a castle? Was it now? Now you got me intrigued. I need to understand. <laughs> I, w I was born in a dungeon. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I, um, it's not a sob story or anything. Yeah. But I, I, I my mother and father, I'm, I'm an only child. We, we leave Bulgaria. I'm, I'm Bulgarian by nationality and we moved to Germany and from Germany, come to America once we have the papers and green card and everything. Mm. But that journey for a young developing mind was very intense and I was very happy too, but I saw some very brutal stuff and experienced near brutal stuff. Um, and that, it has a lot of juxtaposition to the happiness. How old so, were you? Oh boy. First, second grade. I, oh, I don't know how. Yeah, your, that my is, daughter's uh, first grade. Her brain is awake to everything. <laughs> yeah. So, um, totally. it's uh, it's a it's a it's a road um, of very rich, very real experiences that has that I love to visualize in my work. That I love to sort of put into my work, whether it's through just color or whether it's through actual storytelling. For example, being on my site right now, I don't want to drag this on too long, but um, this is a piece I did a while back. Uh, sorry, I don't know why it's taking so long. It took a little bit for me earlier too, so no worries. You got time. It's uh, it's this is a con this is contrast. I'm trying to show someone relaxing in the foreground and in the background. Something violent is happening. To me, a lot of the times that was my life. I was safe at home, but I would turn on the television or I'd look out my window and something was anticipated or is something terrible is happening. So that uh, to me is life. That to me is you driving through the safari with your friends and you see a lion eating a zebra. To me, that is, uh, wow, somebody's calling. Sorry. No worries. Um, to me, that is the, the thing that excites me and the, the same thing that disturbs me. Um, and I want to, sh I love sharing that with the people who like my work. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I'm lucky that I got, I get hired on that. Uh, I'm lucky that uh, people can see that, I guess, and, and relate to it and, 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 and feel the same way I feel. Right. Um, what else? Sorry. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so let's look at, I want to look at one more piece of work. And this might be, you know, sure. it might be a little controversial. So you guys tell me what you think. I don't mind getting corrected. But there was an image of a guy in a doorway, um, nude for the most part. And uh, and then somebody, there's a person below him. But it's just, it's Oh, up. right. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. It's uh, in the middle, sorry. like fourth. Uh, over and I think it's just up a couple more column, a couple more rows. Up, up. Keep going. 
Yep, there you go. And, uh, am I? So stay right there, and it's uh, okay. three <laughs> three rows down, four columns over. Three rows down, four columns over. It's the guy. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I I I, I know what you're talking about. Okay, because uh, talk... this I looked at this and I I didn't get the the like I got mixed signals and then I was like I had this weird disturbed feeling. I was like, this, I don't understand what's going on. I didn't know how to react. And this was what really got me thinking. It's like, you know, that's the thing that got me thinking, like, how did this guy get in here? Like, how did Alex get into this concept world when I, I, I can't tell if this is a painting or if this is a concept or what, because it's just so emotive. I mean, there's so much packed into this. I, uh, th disturbing. to me, this is, uh, thank you. I mean, I'm glad it says that to and nothing else really. Uh, it, it um, to me, this is about feeling claustrophobia and feeling sheltered, Fe feeling not sheltered, not feeling trapped. I'm sorry, feeling closed off, quarantined. Um, and I also don't. I'm. I don't like. I don't like. I don't think anybody does. It's, uh, but I don't like rape. I don't like intense sexual violence. Um, and it's something that uh, maybe I've had too many friends that have experienced that in the past. Um, and when I was growing up through Germany, I, I, I have heard stories and lived on the spectators point of view as a child i didn't watch anything but you know i i it's just something that i in the in the world that i grew up in so it's <clears throat> this is something that to me reflects there's ref reflection on the side of the wall there's s something that's innocent and hopeless uh on the ground on her knees and the lighting this could feel like blood, but to me, this is lighting. And there's someone who's gangly, a noodle of a, of a body type, someone who could, you could break if you, if you were face to face with him, really over feeling like he's overpowering. And the area, his, his genital, his, his crotch is not very defined yet and he's wearing a mask and it feels bloody there's something something about that to me uh, uh sums up a lot of um a lot of my nightmares a lot of fears not only that that i have and that many other people share uh, and it's 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 hard to look at. Like I actually want to ask you to just go back to your <laughs> your art station right now <laughs> because we lost but, all the viewers. <laughs> we lost everybody. And as Frank was saying, it's emotionally risky. But the reason that I was kind of drawn to talk about that right here is because, uh, you know, yeah, let's say if it's Blizzard Games, you're never going that depth. But if you're working with somebody like Darren Aronofsky or um, you know some of these things like. You know, this is one of the powerful aspects of cinema. 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 Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Is Absolutely. Getting there and getting people with you in a way, like Requiem for a Dream. I mean, I can't. I I can't watch that. There's parts of that that remind me of my mom, and I'm just like, it's just, it's not a watchable film for me. Right. Um, that's also where I pull a lot of my emotions from when I put it in the, in these paintings is. Uh, what, whether you call it trauma or or just something that stays with you from films, mm. from a lot of films. It starts from John Carpenter and spans all the way to Stanley Kubrick, Darren Aronofsky, Paul Thomas Anderson, also European directors uh, like Michael Haneke, uh, 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 Japanese director Akira Kurosawa, all the, uh, David Lynch, another great one. Uh, he, those people have created works of art, movies uh, that uh, that 
have influenced me and injected me with snippets, if just moments, uh, not even the entire film, just moments that stay with me. And th those that moment could be very different for everybody else. That's mm. also the beautiful thing. The, it's such a deep world you can uh, pull inspiration from that uh, it's almost endless. It's infinite. Mm. And there's so much out there. Man, Hollywood is old and there's so much you can dive into and, and discover. And that's also what keeps me excited in this industry. That's great. To keep doing this work. Yeah. All right. Well, let's segue. And uh, if you don't mind, sure. let's get ourselves into Photoshop. Oh, sure. Uh, and see if, you know, if you could show us a little bit, because the, a little bit about just how you search for and how you find these ideas or these forms, really. Sure. Um, well, uh, I, I was talking earlier how I abstractly think about uh, my reference. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I'm blowing it up quite large here. But sometimes I, f I find uh, beauty in, in the noise. So a lot of the times I just, I, I just directly, I don't care about what the photo is saying. I, I'm. Oh, okay. I get it. I just, I just want to use that as the underpainting, but maybe these flames, they remain the way they are. Maybe I, I'll use this as a, as a focal point. So perhaps I, I, I don't know what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. but, I'm, my brain is automatically searching what this could be. Where, what world am I in right now? Where am I jumping to? Where am I teleporting my mind? Am I staying in a modern world or am I going in a fantasy world? Am I going in the future? What type of story do I want to tell? Is it just going to be something flashy, something neat? That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Or is it, do I want to say something deep? Do I want to uh, create something that will uh, make the viewer ask questions about what they're looking at? So I am thinking about composition, something that I will be, you know, going over more and more, but it's... Uh, Yeah, it's kind of like doodling on a on a more direct. I'm not this isn't a pencil sketch, but it's the same idea. And, um, and I see you switching between warm and cool, still kind of very similar values, but warm and cool to make a distinction. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm aware of the color palette that's already. I, I'm using what's here mm -hmm. and um, going with it. I'm adapting with it. So I do like that. I, this is creating You guys didn't lose audio, just so you know. I'm just being quiet. No, no, no. Sorry. So he's, uh, I'm, I'm, he's went full on artist brain, so I didn't want to interrupt. Him. <laughs> you guys could ask questions. I, I could try to talk. I, I, I do have um, somewhat of a, a trouble with that. I, I start losing my train of thought, and I don't want to be rambling or saying bullshit. Um, but, yeah, right now I'm just trying to – take us somewhere relatable. So if I'm adding a figure yeah. in this or maybe multiple figures staring, maybe now I'm, I'm starting to think about the angle. Are we low to the ground? Is this maybe is there's foreground elements here that, um, that could su suggest that.
So, and this is, this could be a very quick comp composition, loose rough that mm -hmm. could be given to the client for, for the very first pass. Like I was thinking about this angle. I was thinking about maybe that's how we see this moment of the the moment where they look into the fire and see the future. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what, whatever it could be. Um, and I, I see you're I, working I, very I'm very small yeah. here too, right? Yeah, this is 12, 1280 by 800. Um, it's proportionate to the native resolution to my mm. monitor. I don't know why uh, I chose that, but that's where I got this res from it. I don't think it really matters. Um, All right, in a little bit, we're going to open this up for uh, some, I'm going to get some questions in. Guys, feel free to start shouting out now, and I'll start passing them in as he is uh, fainting away. Um, Stefan, any advice on getting the most out of dark tones in a painting? The most out of dark tones? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, I guess... <clears throat> What I could say about that is that I, I like to I like to group values a lot, and let's say there was a so there was a dark ob, dark object in the background here, right? This figure will still be here. It'll still be in the foreground, and I'll try and I'll make sure it 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 always stays like that. But the most out of dark tones is the same idea as what I did here: is is grouping values. So if if you're doing a really dark frame, it's really training your eye on. On, on how subtle, to, how to simplify I hope you guys could still see this, I went full screen, I hope it's not uh, is it still there? Yep, still here Okay So this is dark tones and all I did was shift the slider so easy, you'd have to plan this out in traditional medium um, but you I'm consciously thinking about this. I didn't just, I didn't take it too far or too, still left it too light. I wanted it at this level because when you squint your eyes, what's popping out really are these moments here. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I'm, thinking about my dark tones it's about how I'm grouping everything it's um, it's how I'm gonna show contrast with that so uh, it's it's it's, a, it's probably difficult to just uh, explain but if I'm painting it here now maybe I could get to what I'm trying to say Uh, a lot of the times it's not it's not always good to do dark images mm -hmm. <laughs> just from a business from a professional point of view I've had a lot a lot of clients in the past tell me oh, your work is maybe too dark do you have do you have lighter stuff mm -hmm. and i'd ask him the dark mood wise no 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 like your frame is dark you have really dark i mean it's beautiful blah 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 but it's it's dark do you have lighter keyframes so i know that maybe only recently or in the past couple of years i've started to 
show a range, but um, I guess I'm kind of just talking out loud here, guys, mm -hmm. because I'm trying to find the reasons to why I love doing dark tones to answer that question. What's what's the most you can get out of a dark tone? Contrast, I guess. You can really capture how maybe a, a, a lens could see uh how we how we could see through a, a lens at night will you see brilliant detail or is it just the areas of of smoke and fire that's what's going to pop out and we'll see silhouettes and why why is it being lit like this what is why why are we in a dark area so before you even question what's the most you can get out of the dark tones ask yourself maybe why do you want to show it in the dark it's it's, some, it could, it's very it could be a very simple answer like it's this event is happening at night or all the fire moments are at night i mean it sounds simple but maybe it takes a lot to get to that simple answer um so I love that. All right, let's take a... Uh, Aiden is asking, do you always dive straight in with color uh, or do you ever start with value passes? I like I like diving into color. Yeah, usually for my personal work and a lot of times client work, I just directly go into color. But with Photoshop, you can always check your values. Mm, in just a, desaturate it. You could desaturate it, yeah. Um, there's it's with CC Photoshop CC. Uh, there's these great. There's a great um, tool here, Camera Raw Filter, and you can just take it to your saturation down. And you can even mess with exposure. You could just see how. Oh wow! Yeah. You could very quickly figure out where you would like it to be. This isn't the final. Of mm -hmm. course, but how you'd want it to read the the range, maybe how saturated you want it. Mm -hmm. How the fire, the flames, they're more they've cooled off more into the pink, or maybe I could leave it at this spot. Now it's no longer as dark. Now it's probably early morning if they're outside um there's also temperature change but i like to you know the, these things i like to cover right off the bat um to a very extreme or subtle uh point sometimes i do it at the very end as well um sometimes i take a finalized image and i do that what i just did with that uh, with the sliders and it does give a boost mm. in a way. It does help me f come to the final point. Color to me is, uh, it, it, I, I'm still learning how to control it um, completely confidently. So a lot of the time I'm exploring, I'm searching. With composition, I, I do that as well, but. I feel like with composition, I know exactly what I want, mm -hmm. um, exactly how I, I want to frame something. So this is very simple, but this is how I'm dividing the frame by using this character. And sorry. Uh, and then there's this angle in the back. And there's a character here as well. I mean, these the this is a way of framing. Maybe it's also the eyes or how I I decide this early on how I want what do, what do I want to be the focal point? Is he holding something? Is he holding? Uh, an orb or I don't know some something metal 
plate with, with a gem in it, something reflective. Why is he holding? Why is that popping into my head? Right now, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud, guys. I'm not really, because this is um, it's not a planned out demo or anything. Um, but why am I thinking about a reflective surface being pointed at fire? Why am I, maybe that's making me dive deeper into the story. Maybe that's, this is what we're gonna see, what's coming next. So these heads, this alignment of compositionally, it's pointing us into this, this smoke in the, in the background, although it's organic, it's uncontrolled. It's something that could be guiding our eye through here. The first read or the second read, maybe this is the second read. The first read would be his helmet or his face. So anyway, um, from this point, what I like to do is a lot of times I like to bash in photos, elements of detail that will probably um, either stall my work or get it exactly to where I want it to be. So. By stalling, basically what that's saying is, I have no idea what's gonna come out yet. Might so work, it's, might it's, not. My, yeah, but maybe, maybe there's something to this noise and detail that's so compressed, that's so uh, refined already. There's so much nuance in the texture here that if I, I use it right, um, it could bring a level of believability, a level of reality to this image. Mm -hmm. And you uh, collapsed the image earlier, right? So do you work with layers a lot or do you try to work? I collapse a lot. Um, it forces me to be bold it forces me not to care at all not to be um, precise it's not about precision at this point mm -hmm. it's, I'm just starting off uh, what brush are you using now is that a it's uh, uh, uh you're painting the yeah, mask. This, oh yes, I'm. I have a quick mask, uh -huh. and I'm painting with light and dark to take it away or put it back in. Got it. So, um, right now in this case, I'm not really. It's not doing anything for me. But what else? What I do start thinking about is planes. It's the simple forms. Mm. What's the top plane, the side plane? So um, I put it on mixer brush mainly because I like to still retain the textural brush. These these moments here, this weird edge accident, uh, I like to smear those and still use that texture. Uh, it creates that natural breakup in, in the end, mm -hmm. which sometimes could look like film grain. Um, so I'm thinking about edges. I'm thinking about how these forms could be lit and maybe the front of his Did 
Design at the speed of thought, Frank says. Design at the speed of thought. <laughs> He's asking yeah. if you're familiar with uh, Sergio Leone's films. What's that? I'm sorry? He's asking if you're familiar with Sergio Leone's films. Absolutely. I love Sergio Leone. Uh, I've seen everything he's made. One of my favorites is American uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Uh, but, However, I fight that with Once Upon a Time in the West. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's a great influence for me. I love his graphic. Uh, I, I don't remember who his cinematographer was, but I love his cinematographer. I know Sergio Leone also had uh, his eye as well, but he did use somebody for that. Um, I also love John Carpenter, Dean Cundey, mainly from his, from Halloween to The Thing, Christine, all those really inspired me when I was young. Stayed with me. Actually, I had nightmares about Michael Myers for a long time after I watched the television version of Halloween and uh, was shut off. It's like, oh, you shouldn't watch this. It's not, I want closure. He just escaped. He just got out of the asylum. He's going to kill people. I need to see what happens. So I couldn't sleep. <laughs> That's oh, exactly my introduction. So, sorry, I'm uh, trying to get my detail. I'm, I, I think I'm noodling here, but uh, I, what's important to do is is to squint your eyes or blur your eyes and, and group these chaotic marks or whatever and, and ask yourself, what is, is, is this good to have? Does it feel right? And kind of balance it out, make sure it's, it stays the same, um, as as the the soul that your sketch has, your rough, and if you can retain that quality throughout the entire process to the very end, uh, that's good. I think uh, that's just the way I think about it. And how do you know when it's finished? Um, when the I believe when the mo the moments that you want to resonate with the viewer are, are clear enough and when everything else feels consistent. Mm -hmm. If I was to render out or paste a photo of a guy's head here, just directly um, this is a good example actually. I did this recently. Let me see if I can this 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 image is done in a very similar way of what I'm doing right now, except it, it's a little more bolder. Um, <clears throat> if I was to take a face here, and just just leave it. It, it it's not going to it's just going to stand out like a sore thumb so consistency is important mm -hmm. treating everything in, in the same level even if you if you've treated well even if you did you know clean it up and make made it sit proportionally and, and the lighting fits and everything it it uh it just doesn't it's not going to work it has to feel the way this feels it has to be treated so with actually with this piece um i i think i took an an underpass of a of a bridge mm -hmm. of a freeway bridge or something i turned it on its side and i started to break into it and i and i used these elements these support beams here to as a as a wall um 
I just started to tr see it abstract mm. and, and I created a corridor and this figure here, her, her staring back at us, that is just a found person. I didn't think about designing it, but I liked, it's almost like you're casting a moment. You're casting your actor for your shot. Yeah, I, I liked her stare. Um, I like how they were looking back into us. It's almost like they're looking into our soul. So there's something to me about opening a doorway for her to walk through or, or creating this pathway. Like she's almost destined to go through, but at the last moment she's looking at us. Mm. There's, there's something about the color palette that is in that moment that creates to me a, a feeling of dread or a feeling of nostalgia or so, like a memory. Like here, this is a flashback to the viewer. So with this, this to me feels like in, we are in the moment. We're just, in, we're in a, either in a fantasy or a sci-fi world. It's, um, hmm. it's probably also because of the things we watch nowadays, yeah. uh, the way I feel about it. It's probably because of Game of Thrones. It's probably because of, and it's, it's very important to be aware of what's out there, I believe. Uh, in order to be, uh, in order in order to be a good creator of this type of work, it's good to be aware of. So you so you one don't end up creating something that's already been done, and people call you out on it. You know yeah. what the internet's like, uh, and oh, yeah. yeah. So. It could be that could lead to a lot of toxicity. Then you have to defend and stand your ground. You don't want that, or you could just not care. Anyway, I'm ranting. Well, the, the uh, second yeah, thing is uh, is also um, it, it helps you. It, it fuels you. You can sample from what's out there. Just sample from different places, or sample a little, and then put your part in it. So, anyway, yeah, go ahead. All right. So uh, we may have lost some of the people on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so we will get back to you guys. Um, if you see me over here in the corner replying madly, that's what I'm doing. Oh, uh, gotcha. So, okay. So let's get some questions in. And then um, Ali will be posting. Up. If you're like me, then you're already like jazzed for this course. Because what, in the span of, I think, 45 minutes, you took... A random photo and turned it into something totally different, and uh, and it, yeah, I mean, it reads. It's it's amazing. It's fascinating seeing you go through that process. So, oh, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna get you guys all the information on the course and everything like that uh, as soon as we have it, probably today, um, as well as just a little email out for everybody who attended to make sure you guys have that. But uh, this is at conceptartworkshop.com. And uh, that's where the course is going to be. We're going to have two options for you. You can either be part of the live class or you can just get that on demand and get the classes about 24, 48 hours after the class goes. So you get a delay there. You don't get the same interaction. Um, or you get the interaction where Alex is working with you on your work and helping you move the needle on your work every, you know, once a week, every week for 10 weeks, I think, right? 10-week class? I think I think we spoke about eight, but eight, it yes. could be 10. No, no, eight yeah. is eight's actually oh. ideal. Um, oh, okay. So we'll make sure it's eight. Uh, tell me a little bit about the class and what you want to teach because you've taught this before, but um, for those people who don't understand, like what is it that we're going to do in this course? Well, I mainly want to be covering composition and telling story through that. But in, in that... Uh, I'll be going over mood and, okay. and how to achieve the mood you want. Right. Uh, and that's using lighting, color, edges, and a breaking down film visually. Um, sometimes it helps to watch how moments are edited together. But a lot of times what's really important is is to see how we're placed in the scenario. 
mm-hmm. watching Fincher's films and watching how he's placing the viewer in in the shot, like let's say from Seven or, or Fight Club, right. where and oh, Seven was well, a brutal it, film, very brutal film. Um, mm. But but it, it, it's uh, it's it's about taking what's already out there and and applying it to our work as well. Yeah. So that's, that's really the essential uh, part of it, but it's also uh, keeping in touch with the emotional side, the, the feeling, what, how you want the viewer to feel. This isn't, I wouldn't, you know, I mean, you could categorize it as whatever you want, but it's really, um, that's, to me, that's what matters the most, is the feeling that comes through looking at a piece. You could definitely be effective more than enough in the industry doing great designs, and there's feeling behind that as well. Mm -hmm. It's just um, what I teach and what I like to show is um, mood through composition, like I said, lighting, mm-hmm. color composition, um, and that's what I will be covering, really. And what and kind that's of that's what I'll be breaking down. What from people, black and white to color? Okay, black and white to color. And so, what should they expect to get out of this? One portfolio item, multiple, or what's the goal? It's definitely multiple because yeah. if you have roughs and then one final piece Mm -hmm. that is multiple you have a final piece and then you have good roughs that led up to that good variations a variation doesn't mean just altering the the color of the sky it means completely changing the angle completely seeing if if this is one way we're looking at the frame right now that i've done if this is one way we're going to look at this shot if this is a a wide or or can we be even wider to the frame maybe right. we're staring at it from a distance maybe it's this i'm checking to make maybe sure you did that in another layer yeah i did <laughs> uh, <laughs> i was like no <laughs> But a lot of times I don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, so maybe this is another way. And why? Maybe it's about the isolation. Maybe it's the figures. How are, how am I dividing this plane? How am I dividing the frame? Um, what's that? What is this saying? Yeah. So. If this is a sequential, I already have my color palette set up. If there, and, oops, sorry. So if this is a cut in, if this is part of the movie that you're watching. Right. This is the very first shot you see. And then it cuts to this. Will it make sense? If it if it is a sequential, if it, it's also treating your variations as a sequential because you're still in the same world, but you can treat it like cuts, different takes, uh, different um, different angles. Hmm. That's awesome. So, in a way, you're kind of pretending to be a cinematographer. You're pretending to be an editor as well. Great. Um, Okay, and then two D or three D, or what are the what's the software? Or what are they going to be using? Photoshop. Photoshop. It is uh, special brushes it, or standard. Well, I kind of have my own custom made brushes and other brushes that I've taken from a huge pile. I could probably share this, mm-hmm. but it, any brush will do. Whatever you're comfortable with. Um, the execution is about thought. It's how well you think about. It's about. It's not. It's not about rushing or or for the brush is not going to make your image better. It's about how you. It's the steps you take to clean up that edge. It's the steps you take to design the silhouette of of his hair or or the the negative space between his arm and 
and a shield or whatever. So, uh, yeah, no, brushes, it's, it's going to be very simple. Default or custom, whatever you're comfortable with. But it's all Photoshop, and it's, it's painting, but also photo bashing. Um, okay. It's not uh, entirely clean painting. Maybe the roughs are, but from there on, we're moving into um, applying photo. Getting it to that point that a lot of clients like to see. That's that's the only reason why you can always do the painting, person personal stuff for yourself. And there's clients like Blizzard and Marvel and um, uh, I guess Riot that, that very much appreciate uh, that type of work and also Naughty Dog. But a lot of the times in freelance art and film and in TV, they want to see quick turnarounds looking very believable. So showing that, um, maybe that's what I should have done for the demo. I just couldn't, I, I'm, I'm kind of improvising this. So it's not uh, a, what you did for the demo was amazing to just see this process unfold because the fluidity that you have with designing is, is just amazing. And so I think that this was a really good key Thank insight into the course and into what to expect. And, and also, and I, I imagine, you know, you have to work on the fly, uh, quite a lot. Uh, Yes. Yeah. So absolutely, you, you don't get a lot of choice. So like Sean is asking, do you use and gather reference and prepare yourself prior to starting the concept or, you know, jump in like you just I, did? I think you constantly should be gathering reference. Even if you're not working, you should constantly be fueling that bank. And then when it comes ready, when it comes time, you have that bank. So the reference uh, part, sometimes they give you reference. Sometimes you you spend a little time. Yeah. And yeah, and you collect reference. So um, yeah, okay. I, whichever, whichever happens to be. Okay. All right, guys, let's do this. Um, Alex, I just sent in the chat a, a little uh, link to Concept Art Workshop mm -hmm. to the page. So if you don't mind clicking there, um, and just show in your browser. Uh, oh, uh, to th in go to uh, webinar, there'll be like inside the little chat thing. Um, there'll be a link. The chat thing. I'm so sorry. No worries. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yes, there it is. Boom. I wish I had better words for it. So um, you guys here have got the link to it. We're going to adjust this page and keep you updated on things on this page. Uh, and if you scroll down, if you're ready, the, uh, the way to get into the course is right there uh, with the two options. We're going to add in another option for you guys uh, where you get the on-demand access. So head over to Concept Art Workshop or head over here or wait until you get an email from me that's going to have the link for it. The uh, enrollment is open. All the information should be on the page. You can also scroll to the bottom. You get the FAQ. And then um, if you're in the live class, the live class has 30 days, 30-day uh, refund policy. So the live class is going to be limited because it's hands-on. So if you're up for that, then you just, as soon as you get the link, you need to sign up because um, these classes do fill up. All right. So if you have any questions about it, don't hesitate to reach out to me and, uh, and connect. Uh, and otherwise, I'll make sure you guys have this link and you have the replay as soon as possible. And uh, Alex, man, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Uh, I could watch you do that. Like we should just live cast right into your studio. I could watch <laughs> that all day. That was beautiful. <laughs> so, thank you. All thank right, you. guys. Uh, thank you, everybody, for who came out and joined me. And uh, look for more information in your inbox soon. And make sure you sign up for this course as soon as you get that link. Uh, this is going to be an amazing uh, amazing course. It's going to walk you through and really build your painting chops. So, all right. Take care. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, guys. Thank you.